rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up. Tell your neighbor, don't use, don't use the church. Any position in the church. Any position in the church. To, hide yourself to hide yourself. While doing evil. While doing evil. Speak to that neighbor as if you don't like the neighbor. As if you don't like the neighbor. Warn the neighbor. Ha. Huh. When you have query with your husband, do you just stop like that? No. Without fighting? No. Neighbor, the real evil doers are in the church. You must stab that neighbor as if you want to fight. <laughs> Touch the neighbor. <laughs> And you are smiling. When you are quarreling, are you smiling? Can you see your life? You are one of the evil doers. That's why you are not taking this serious. If you know you are not evil doer hiding in the church, look, twist your face and warn the neighbor. Say, neighbor, I'm not joking with you. Though I love you, there's time for everything. I'm not joking this morning. Have you seen my face? Blood. In my eyes, I want to tell you the real evil doers are not home, are in the church. Are you one? Don't use the church to fool people, don't use the church to hide your real nature. The real evil doers are in the church. Are you the one? Are you among? Tell your neighbor, yes, let me say my tell neighbor, yes, I'm the one. Me, I'm an evil doer in need of his mercy. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, the real evil doers are in the church. Are you among? For me, I'm among. Praying to the righteous. Because the Bible says, no one is righteous. Not even one. It means I'm a more. Lord, have mercy on me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have your seat. Thank you. The real evil doers are where? In the church. We use the position. We use the position. To hide ourselves. We use the position. To hide our real nature. So that people can prefer us. You can hide it from man. You cannot hide it from God. Tell your neighbor. I can hear you. I can hear you. This is new here. Let us amen. Listen. Church is not a home to hide. You know, if I don't go to church, my community will see me as a bad man. Let me go to church. You go to church. If I don't be a cheerful giver in the church, give money all the time. They will see me as if I'm stingy. Let me just be giving money. When, when they say this, we we'll have to buy a land for church, oh, I will give five million. Ha! Ah, this man is a good man. Mm, it's not like that. We want to have this in the church. We need to buy this. This it, it, it costs 20 million to buy this in the church. Hello. Good morning, church. I will donate 10 million. Ha! Ah! That is not how to know a true child of God. A true child of God will not even announce it publicly. He will wait after the service and meet the man of God. Sir, I heard there's an urgent need of money and I saw people struggling to... Okay. Don't worry, I will take care of it. Nobody will know. Even your wife in the house will know. 
when Abraham took Isaac to go and sacrifice, even the wife did not know. That is true, child of God. You are in church, is church in you. You are in the presence of the Lord, is the presence of the Lord in you. You are in the presence of righteousness, is righteousness in you. You are in the presence of holiness, is holiness in you. Ask yourself that question. Don't go to church because people go to church. Don't serve God because people serve God. Serve God out of divine knowledge. Because if you serve God because people are serving God, the day people stop to serve God, you will stop to serve God. The day they will say anything bad about God, you too, you will say everything bad about God. But if you serve God out of divine revelation, no matter what happens, no matter the condition, because you had a revelation, you will continue serving the Lord. Let me take you to the scripture. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. I read, And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. I will take it a second time. Now, Israel, it means it's something urgent. When you hear the word now, now means today, now, now, now. Take this advice. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Let's go to Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter number 24 verse 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, Take note of that. If it seemed evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve. Whether the gods of the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I take it a second time. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. May the Lord bless his words. Listen, church. For you to be in the church does not mean church is in you. For you to serve the Lord does not mean the Lord is in you. For you to clap your hands in the church doesn't mean the Spirit of God is in you. Joshua said, Choose 
the God you want to serve. But as for me and my house, we shall serve. As your neighbor, whom do you serve? I can't hear you. Talk to the neighbor, whom do you serve? I can't hear you. Again and again. Listen, many of our challenges, what we are going through, we never looked for the challenges. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Many of our challenges are not brought to pass by us. What we are going through now what you might have been going through for some years is not caused by you, but the gods your fathers choose to worship. When I was growing, I was privileged to be the first grandson in my family. My father loved me. That's my grandfather. Because I was the first grandson. In fact, in the village, they called me the handbag of my father, my grandfather. He's going to tap and wine. I'm with him. When he taps, he gives me to test. And I say, Papa, it's nice. We are going to the forest to cultivate. I'm with him. Not his children. The grandson is with him. Listen. When I grew up at the age of 12, you see the number 12 is very dangerous. If you fail, that is the number. When you arrive at that age, that is where Satan starts to look for you. When I was the age of 12, I came back from school one day, from one. When I came back from school, I entered the sitting room, what we call parlor. I saw my grandfather. His head was on the ground. I greeted him. I passed. When I changed my uniform, Passing back again, he called for me. He said, sit down. I sat. Do you know why I call you? I said, no, Papa. I want to show you the gods of Agbonto's family. In all my children, I have seen you, the grandson. There is something you carry which I want to hand you the gods of Abdonto's family. As an obedient child, I say, yes, Papa. Not knowing the meaning of gods by then. Everybody follow up. You will understand why suffering came to your family. And my grandfather took me. We went behind the kitchen. He began to mention their names. This one means this. This one means this one. Was well understood. When he died, I slept in the room. I saw 12 tortoise. 12. How many tortoise? They entered my room. Where are these things coming from? There is no forest. How, how come these things are visiting me in the night? 12 in number. They entered my room. Six. Six. And I called my brother, Apostle Jovet. I said, Apostle, yes. wherever you are, please just be coming to our house. Leave up house and come down. He said, what is the problem? I said, I'm seeing tortoise everywhere in my room. He said, what? I said, yes. And somebody say ancestors. I can't hear you say ancestors. ancestors. 
Though I had a call from God, they saw the power and the eyes I have, and they wanted to use it in their own way. Don't forget this. Many of you were born prophets. They saw your eyes and they called it four eyes, and they took you to which doctor and they closed them. And you are suffering today. You are suffering. Listen. We prayed. And those things began to leave my room. One after. You cannot imagine what I'm talking about. Have you seen a tortoise? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve in your room at midnight. You are joking. I'm coming. I'm laying a foundation. When I said no, I can't do this. I prayed that night. They began to leave one after the other. Before I opened my eyes, my room was empty. My brother came. I told my brother, I said, Apostle, this is what happened. This is what happened. He descended and told me, he said, these are your ancestors. So when he left, I said, and he showed me to the gods. It's time to disgrace those gods now. All the gods, I began visiting them. I said, no, as for me and my generation, we shall not serve you. You, this God, you have kept our family in poverty. You, this God, you took the glory and gave us shame. You, this God, you took our position and gave us another position. You, this God, I said, no, I cannot. My grandfather did a divine mistake to hand it to a divine man. I took those idols one after the other. I needed first to chase the gods away and later on bring down the God of Abraham, Isaac. I want to ask you a question. Do you think what you are going through is caused by you? You were born and you came and met it. You were born in the family of rejection. You grew up in rejection. You met rejection. You are manifesting in rejection. You were born in the family of poverty. You grew in poverty. You met poverty. You are manifesting with poverty. You were born in the family of sickness. You grew in sickness. You manifested sickness. And can I talk to somebody here? If only Joshua said, if only he said, but from me and my family, those idols, those gods, those idols, those powers, I will serve them no more. For me and my family, we shall serve the God of Abraham, we shall serve the God of Isaac, we shall serve the God of Jacob. I want to ask you a question. Which God do you serve? There are Christians who still serve idols. There are Christians in the church. After Sunday service, after everything, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, in the month of November, they travel to the village. In the month of December, they begin to visit their gods and begin to give fowl and begin to give wine and begin to give red oil. When you come back, you say, Pastor, nothing is moving. It cannot move. You can serve two masters at the same time. It cannot move. Prophet, I am doing everything possible, but my business is not moving. Listen, choose. Either you serve the devil. You don't need... You don't need pocket allowance to serve the devil. Either you serve the devil or you serve God. Don't mix it. And serving the devil does not just entail you going before the idol. Do you know you prefer some family meetings more than Sunday service? <laughs> Do you know there are some people who are not in church because of a family meeting? The family meeting that cannot hold on Saturday. It cannot hold on Friday. It chooses the Sabbath. Are you, are, you, are, are you wise? 
Are you wise? The family meeting, they didn't choose Sunday in the evening. They choose Sunday in the morning when people gather to praise God. They also want to gather to praise Satan. And you are there as a deacon. Whom do you serve? Serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Some of us will serve God with our body and our hearts afar. Joshua said, I have seen the wickedness of those gods. I have seen how dreadful those gods look like. I want to advise you, choose today. Choose whom ye shall serve. I'm giving that message to you. Choose today whom ye shall serve. To serve the devil is easy from the beginning, but more complicated at the end. To serve Satan is easy from the beginning, but more complicated at the end. Choose whom you shall serve. Choose, my sister, I said choose. When I'm talking about the devil, don't think the devil will stand like this and say, I'm the devil. I'm the devil. Choose me. Serve me. No! No! The devil can make himself available. The devil can use what you want. There are some people, if you don't make your hair, you can't go to church. That's the devil. My wife, let's go to church. Say, no, sir. I forgot to make my hair yesterday. So I cannot make it to church. How do you want me to appear before the people? But if they give you a latest birthday, you will take grave cap and wear. Come the grave cap. Whom do you serve? But for the church. He said, my husband, I, I cannot follow you. Do, do you want me to appear like this? You start to give reasons. See my head now. And you know, say temple, camera day. They, they see people from all sides. I carry the head go church. You say, self-talk. Make a carry am go. If I'm your husband, I'll say, carry am. You know, be no say Sunday they come. I not make head yesterday. The devil passes through these things. And before you realize, when you miss the service, first Sunday, second, third, you have the spirit of heaviness. And you backslide. And the day you come to church, you say, who is on the Lord's side? I want to know. You say, pastor is singing against me. It's not against you. It's against your conscience. The devil has a lot of tactics for you to serve him. The devil has a lot of mediums to hold you to himself. You can just go to a place. Listen. And you sit down. A very big occasion. Madam, what can we offer you? You smile. <laughs> you look around. If there's any temple member. Madam, please, what can I offer you? Mm -hmm. You look around. Small Guinness. <laughs> Somebody say, I hear you, sir. <laughs> yeah. Sir, what can we offer you? <laughs> you? You stand up as if you're humble, whereas you are wise. You stand up and you take, you take 60 degrees left. Sir, I'm talking to you. What can I offer you? Baron de Madrid. <laughs> Somebody say, I hear you, man of God. <laughs> you are killing yourself. You are killing yourself. When you drink that today, tomorrow you drink. When they call you for intercessors meeting. Immediately after you have drank that, will you come? When they call you one, two, three times, you have already invited the spirit of heaviness. And that's all about your life. Sister, what can we give you? The sister has dressed very well as, she, as if she is drinking only Coke. But when they will ask her, Madam, what can we offer you? Well dressed, well dressed. 
You look around if the pastor has gone. There are some people when they dress, you, you are even afraid to ask them which choice. You, you just take top and bramus and give them. Or non-alcoholic wine. But the moment you keep it before them, move that in a bit more picking you decrease. <laughs> Boy, it's an intercessor. <laughs> Whom do you serve? Is it the bottle or the Bible? Can you clap for yourself wherever you are? Satan can use anything for you to serve him. Women, there are some things that have taken God's time. You are now serving the devil through those things. There are women that can never dress without earring. They can never dress without a chain. They cannot dress without lace. Anything apart from that, they cannot go out. Satan has you even fight your husband because of meeting Lapa. But you cannot fight your husband that you don't have a Bible. But you bought in your husband. Hold, hold holy. People don't buy Lapa for that woman. Similar weighty. Similar. You go kill me for this house. Kill me. Now, now my own sofa. Now I already show plenty. Now you be the poorest man. Yeah. Yeah. See, matter, matter, woman, I never buy it clothes. <laughs> and when neighbors come, you will change story. They went to my own sofa, sofa, sofa. You will not call Lapa again. Sofa every day, ball picking, ball. lie. You just change topic because neighbors came. And when the neighbors go back, you must buy me the Lapa. <laughs> when landlord comes, now wait in order for ball picking, you need to go see my mommy them for us. Lies. Amen? Amen. Now our days, if a lady does not plot very well, she does not come to church. You don't carve your eyebrows, you don't come to church. If your husband has not bought you perfume, you won't come to church. If you have not wear the colon that has foam behind to have buttocks, you won't come to church. Why? Why? You think that Satan will just appear and say, serve me, serve me, serve me. No. He uses what you want, what you like, and makes it exaggerated. Amen? Amen. But there are Christians, you take your feet, you take your legs, you take bike, you take taxi, you go to the market, you buy only alcoholic drinks. No one non-alcoholic. You come to your house, you put into your, inside your bar, you put and put, decorate your parlor. A Christian brother will come in. Instead to say, no, this is non-alcoholic. Can I give you this? You will just go straight to the bar and remove alcoholic wine and open and give your brother. You are initiating him to serve the devil with you. Lift up your hand and say, I will never do that. Praise the Lord. So don't allow Satan to use something and use you as a slave for that thing. When Satan starts to use something, and torment you as a slave. You are serving Satan. Whom do you serve? I want to round up this message. Listen. This is the beginning of the year. Make a decision. Make what? Make a decision. Make a decision. Make a decision. Check what God is using in your life to serve him. And check what the devil is using. I want to tell you this. This year is a good year. If somebody tells you this year is a bad year, please, please ask God. God will tell you something. This year is a unique year. But you need some things to put in place. Serve the Lord. Let your heart be for God. Let your heart be for the spirit. Don't give yourself to the things that pertains to the flesh. Don't give yourself to the things that Satan can use and torment your life. I leave you in faith to see you back in faith.